Welcome to the channel. Today we have a 1988 FJ62 Toyota Land Cruiser Deer Lease Revival back from the dead. Uh, the previous owner parked it at his Deer Lease. Some rats made a home in the engine bay, chewed through all the wires. It's been sitting at the Deer Lease for over five years. It hasn't been inspected. It does not run. Went down there, picked it up, drug it back on a U-Haul trailer. We know we ha at least have a wiring issue, maybe more issues. If you want to see more, hit the like button set notifications, and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments what you think we should do to this thing. If you have any questions about what I did here or any of the tools or parts that I used, just throw a comment down below. All right, folks, we got ourselves here, a 1988 Land Cruiser. Awesome truck. It's got a few little spots, but overall, it's a good driver quality, good solid truck. Stay tuned Guys, and let's see if we can get it running. Release and rats chewed through a bunch of wires. So we started digging into this thing and we found this, the main harness coming into the engine here, about 15 or 20 wires, uh, probably about 30, sorry, there you go. About 30 wire repairs we had to do. We used all heat shrink, solder seal uh, wire uh, ties, which I really enjoy using those. They do a really good job and they're uh, completely sealed up. Um, I'm gonna if it starts and runs, I'm gonna just heat shrink over this one um, But other than that all these others they have been repaired Probably about 30 to 40 in total. I was able to uh, Trace back the wire colors all the way back here to the main harness penetration Find the right wires Connect them to the right colors wherever they were broken or chewed off I deep in the starter harness down here, pulled that up, checked all that out. Everything looks good. These uh, wires here used to go to a winch. So those are just laying up top here. Uh, this, this wire goes to the power antenna. Um, but the bottom line is everything has now been repaired that I can tell. Um, we got a, we took the air box out just to gain access and the washer reservoir. We're going to put the air box back in so that we can hook up the throttle body connector there and uh, hook up the intake and uh, and see if it fires up. And if it, if it fires up, then we'll bundle all this back up nice and neat, tape it up, and uh, move on with our lives. The only thing that's been changed, this is the oil pressure sender switch here. Um, oil pressure sender, and it's been changed over a mechanical gauge there at the bottom of the oil filter so if we can get it the right sender maybe eventually we'll change that back over so the factory gauge light works i'm a big fan of electronic gauges just because if you ever get a hole in that copper line uh it will uh, leak out all the oil in the engine so i'm not a fan of those i like the electronic centers but aside from that uh that's kind of our plans right now and then uh we will go from there uh but if you want to see more projects on this truck uh let me know all right, we got the uh, throttle body hook just uh, thrown in there just a little bit just to see. I'm going to uh, tighten this wire clamp right there and put a battery in and fire it up. We got our battery hooked up. Nothing lit on fire yet. Uh, we got all our wires repaired, probably 40 or 50 repairs. I uh, used all these heat shrink uh, solder connections. Uh, but opened up the harness, was able to trace back all the wires Get our throttle body in. Showing good volts on the battery. This battery's unknown, so I had it on the charger for a little while. But let's see what happens when we crank it up. Okay, good sign. All right. Clock is on. We're in park. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Well, it cranks. I got a little jump box. Let's throw the jump box on. I bet the battery's just low. And uh, I got to throw a little starting fluid in there and let's see what happens. Number, try number two. 
All right, we got the Gulu on here. I don't remember how to turn it on, but Gulu GP4000, awesome little jump box. We're gonna try it again. Let's see what happens. If this doesn't work, we'll see about some starting fluid and do some advanced troubleshooting. Faster crank. Tack seems to be working. No idea what condition the fuel is in. Try a little, a little magic juice here. See what happens. Try that and we'll try a little throttle this time. Horn works. We're fired. We sprayed a little bit of starting fluid in it and it started up. I know my face is pretty dirty. I was crawling underneath and all this shit was falling on me. But what does that tell me? That tells me that we have spark, we have air, all the circuits are working properly except for fuel. So what I didn't hear when I turned the key on was a fuel pump. So this is EFI. And uh, so first thing we wanna do is check for fuel pressure and order the fuse for the fuel pump. So uh, let me do some reading and uh, we'll get back to you. All right. 88 Land Cruiser wire harness repair. Got the multimeter out. We got the fuse panel. And we're just gonna go through here and check check all the fuses. See, it's hard to do one-handed, but just give me a second here. I'll get it. Get these situated like some chopsticks in my hand. If it beeps, you know it's good. Okay, all the fuses that are there check out good. More troubleshooting required. All right, we trained it a couple times. It will fire with starting fluid, but not with, uh, not by itself. So what did we find? Uh, here's our fuel filter. This is our main feed uh, to the engine, goes to the back of the fuel rail. The return line uh, for the fuel injection is Right there pulled it off bone dry so I know it's not getting fuel and that's corroborated by the fact that it will start with starting fluid but not any way else so uh, the gauge is pretty close to empty on the dash so we're gonna go get five gallons of gas and throw it in there just to see uh, but I'm pretty sure it's probably a fuel pump issue uh, so all the fuses were good I didn't find a fuel pump relay per se but I know it probably has one um, so That'll be the next step. We're going to uh, run to the store, get five gallons of gas, and then come back. See you later. Bye. Okay, I got some good advice. We went under here. Let me shut this off real quick. So there's a diagnostic connector. 
we went in here and we jumpered BP and FP. You can't read in the inside of the connector, but they're labeled, which I did. That is battery positive and fuel pump. When I did that, I heard some noise, the fuel pump kicking on. And so let's try it out. Now that we have a reasonable suspicion that the fuel pump is on, let's see what happens. Whoa! It's trying. Doesn't run good, but it runs. Looks like a fan shroud, some pin on that fan shroud every now and then. It's just the regulator's roped up here, so a lot of little squats to fix, but so far so good. I think we've isolated our problem. Sixty pounds of oil pressure, nine hundred RPM. Looks pretty good. Now. To be continued. <laughs> 